Wolves. Wolves. Ow! Wolves. I always have been drawn to the wolf and uh, and them drawn to me. Years ago, I had to spend uh, three days and two nights on a deserted island off the coast of northern Maine um, with almost no supplies whatsoever. I made my campground, I made my tent, walked to the beach, looked up into the sky. The moon was bigger than you ever seen it before. Blood red, blood red. I decided I'm not gonna even pay attention to that. It's a portal to a spiritual world that I don't have anything to do with, right? Went back to my campground, decided I was going to will myself to sleep. I'm sitting there in the middle of the woods with my eyes closed, um, and next thing you know, I hear the howling of the wolves. Ow! I spent the entire night in fear, but also n not really scared, kind of quiet resigned and that if they're gonna come for me, they're gonna come for me. It's interesting, man, because it's almost as if, as at this point right now, I've been involved with DJ culture my entire life, you know? Um, I mean, I guess basically it comes from the standpoint of just being a kid from the city who loved music, who was completely immersed in pop culture in the 80s and 90s. I always say there's this holy trinity of, uh, of like uh, cultural influences, which is basically graffiti, skateboarding, and rap and like hardcore music. You know, it's kind of like the, the things that kind of formed me and shaped me as the guy who I am. Growing up in Philadelphia, obviously there was a certain affinity uh, to paying attention to the DJ. I was the guy that would tape all the radio broadcasts on, on Power 99 and WDAS late night on Friday nights, tape and Saturday, always doing, be playing the new jams. And then I would go on a Sunday afternoon, go down to Armand's Records, pick up whatever records I could get. And then in high school, I just decided to, to take it one step further, get, get turntables. And before you know it, a couple years later, I was actually DJing in like nightclubs, like actual nightclubs in, in downtown Philly, you know. Who wasn't able, wasn't old enough to get into the clubs, you know, right. but they would usher me in the back. Yeah, my back got cut in a knife fight. Nevertheless, nevertheless, my. Other Tucker Bloom bag, when I had the precursor to this, it was indestructible. Honestly, it's you can use it as a as a DJ. You can kind of put your laptop in there, put a few records in there. If I'm doing 45s, I'll just throw all my 45s in here, and it'll be an hour and a half of music. Super, super versatile. The best bag I ever owned. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you have to understand that, you know, we're in a, in a, a line where entertainment is what it's about. You have to find a way to actually make the connection with the people, um, with your crowd. Back in the day, it was people that went out for an experience. They went out to be exposed. So the crowd had uh, a certain amount of uh, rapport and trust with the DJ, you know? Nowadays, it's kind of like, well, everybody can be a DJ, and it's kind of, you're just a glorified uh, jukebox or uh, iPod or whatever, you know. But I think the people that kind of look at it that way, you know, they're not really in it like that, you know what I'm saying? There's people that, okay, I'll go out to a nightclub, I might be into music, but this is just kind of a flick of the month. The people who really are into it, they, they're still out there, they really know what time it is, and that, that's kind of what my crowd is like. You know, my crowd are people that are actually, the music heads. It's incredible that, uh, I get a chance to see the world uh, and have these adventures across the globe. Doing something that I love, something that I would be doing anyway. You know, and I'm very, very, very fortunate that that's the case. The holy trinity of cultural influences for me, you know, uh, that's kind of created this monster that is Cosmo Baker. <laughs> yeah.